All right, so welcome back everyone. Uh, we're very happy to have uh, Kirsten Wickelgren, Wickelgren from uh, Duke University telling us about uh, an arithmetic count of the lines meeting four lines in space, an introduction to A1 and relative geometry. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, the, the, uh, the arithmetic count of lines meaning four lines in space um, was actually suggested by Leonardo Malaccia. So it's um, uh, 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 especially fun for me to get to um, talk to you about this here. And I am very grateful for the, the suggestion. It's um, uh, uh, an enrichment of, of this classical um, question which is uh, how many lines meet uh, for general, meaning no two of them intersect uh, lines in P3. Um, although this, this question is classical, the part of um, this that's new in, in this portion of the talk, um, this is joint with Padma Vati, Srinivasan. Um, the, the classical story um, goes like this, for example, in, in uh, 3264. Um, so um, uh, answer, um, let's take uh, a, a three of those lines. So, um, there's P3, and let's give ourselves line one and um, uh, line two, uh, not intersecting, and um, uh, line three, not intersecting that. Um, and let's first consider the lines um, which intersect um, lines one, uh, uh, well, so um, let's let's first consider the lines which meet or intersect these these three like so. Um, uh, so for any point P, um, for any P on line one, uh, there's a unique line through P that meets both line two and line three. And we can see this by projecting away from P and looking at line two and line three in the P2 of the sky, and then they'll intersect a single point line um, through P intersecting line two and line three. So we look at um, uh, the P2 um, in the sky of, of P and the projection from P of line two and the projection from P of, of line three, they have to meet at a certain point. Um, you know, it's something like from, from viewing from P, it's something like there um, and there on the line three. Um, and then we have this unique line here. this line um, like that. Um, uh, so uh, if you take um, the union of all the lines we get um, from, from this procedure, then they'll form a surface, the union of all the LP. Um, and um, this, we can uh, figure out that this is a degree two surface, degree two. Um, surface, so um, uh, the proof um, uh, is that um, the, this, the surface contains L1, L2, and L3, and the dimension of degree two polynomials, um, so dimension of H0, um, P3, uh, O of two, um, is we need two and split into four groups 
is um, uh, 10. And um, uh, so those are all the degree two polynomials. We need it to vanish on these folks. Um, so the, that's um, the conditions Li, this is a P1, O of two, um, and there are three polynomials um, uh, of degree two on, on, on P1, so we get three conditions per line. Three conditions per line. So there's a dimension one, uh, dimension one uh, space of degree two homogeneous polynomials uh, vanishing on um, L1, L2, and um, L3. Um, so uh, um, this, let's say, let's say F is a generator of this uh, one dimensional space, say F um, is a basis. So it's a degree two polynomial generating this one dimensional space. Um, so the, the zero locus F equals zero, which we're gonna claim is this um, union of all these lines. Uh, this contains three points of any LP. That means it's, since it's degree two, um, that means in fact, it has to contain all the LP um, and uh, since these two, two of these can't intersect, um, uh, um, this containment has to be an equality um, because we can't have this break up into some sort of degree one um, piece. So um, uh, LP does not intersect LP prime for P not um, equal to P prime um, or else um, L1, L2, L3 would lie on a plane. Um, uh, so then we get the, this equality Um, and we have this description of all of the lines meeting, meeting three of our lines. Um, so we need to figure out um, which uh, meet the fourth. And uh, so which LP, those lines meeting three also meet um, L4. And the answer is um, the intersection of um, uh, Q um, with uh, L4 or those meeting and since there are two points of, of this intersection the two lines in Q containing those two points um, uh, are, are our answer so um, by Bezu's theorem Q intersect L4 um, is two points. Um, giving us two lines and this holds over C or over an algebraically closed um, or I guess L4 could be tangent to Q. Um, okay, um, so let's relax the assumption um, that uh, we're in an algebraically closed um, situation. So question um, over a field, and we'll take a general field K um, and let's assume the characteristic of K um, isn't two. Um, so, I mean, what happens here? Um, you can have 
um, the possibilities are two lines over K, a conjugate pair of um, lines over a quadratic extension pair um, of lines over um, K adjoint square root of A um, or L4 again could be tangent four could be um, tangent um, to Q. We're gonna uh, package uh, this information um, uh, in a way that'll give us one answer uh, for, for the count, a way to get an invariant count um, uh, uh, that the, um, the, uh, also generalizes to give a whole bunch of um, uh, invariance of number results over fields that aren't algebraically closed. Um, so let's give another point of view on our, on our two. Um, so let's consider all the possible lines. So Grassmannian 2, 4 um, is all the lines in P3. It's lines in P3 or equivalently uh, dimension two subspaces of a four dimensional space. Um, let's give our subspace a name. So W, it'll correspond to a point, And then we can view it as a subspace of its say field of definition. Um, uh, uh, so this would be a, a point of the Grassmannian uh, valued in, in, in K of W. Um, uh, so, um, Let's choose a basis. Choose um, some basis E1 through E4 of oh, um, a, um, I guess I, I, I'm going to put my line, my original line over K. So let's, let's do that um, uh, such that Uh, L1, um, one of the lines in our configuration of four is the span of um, E3, E4. And we'll let phi1, phi2, phi3, phi4 be the dual basis. Um, then we're going to consider um, some other line will be span of some other basis. Um, hey, it may be not defined over K, um, but um, it'll be linearly independent for E3, E4, linearly um, independent. Um, so uh, the um, L1 and L will meet uh, um, exactly when the, if we take these folks, the, these dual vectors, which cut out um, L1, um, wedge them together and evaluate them on um, E3 wedge E4, um, we get zero. Um, uh, so uh, we can identify the lines L meeting L1 as the zeros of um, say this equation, which is a section of a line bundle. So let's um, uh, write down this equation. Um, we have a tautological bundle over the Grassmannian and what, what we'll with the tautological bundle on the Grassmannian over the point corresponding to W, we can stick uh, the fiber SW is W. So there's a tautological bundle and um, uh, uh, phi one wedge phi two is a section of S dual wedge S dual. 
which is the line bundle over the Grassmannian whose fiber at W um, is um, uh, W dual wedge, um, wedge W dual. Um, uh, so we have a global section, phi one, phi two in H naught of the Grassmannian. Given by its value at W is um, is uh, phi one viewed as a polynomial. It's it's a polynomial on the entirety of um, of uh, the vector space, and we restrict it to, to W. So phi one, phi two, um, its its section uh, uh, W is the element of W dual given by phi one restricted to W wedge phi two um, restricted to W. Um, uh, so the zeros of this section tell us whether we meet um, the first line and we can form an analogous section telling us whether we meet all four lines. So form the analogous section sigma of um, four copies of the dual tautological wedge, the dual tautological. And then the lines meeting all of our lines are precisely the zeros of this section. Our points or L is the projectivization of our dimension two space, um, which is a zero of um, our section. And in particular, the number of um, lines meeting all four is the number of zeros um, of, our, of our section. And um, the Grassmannian is, is four dimensional to, to make a line we need to know um, which points it hits two different planes at. So that's two plus two is four. Um, so we can see why we might expect this number to be finite. Um, uh, we have uh, four dimensions of Grassmannian and four equations um, uh, from our section uh, of this rank four um, bundle. Um, so we've reduced to counting the zeros of a section of a line bundle. Uh, so we have reduced to counting um, the zeros of a section of uh, well, four line bundles direct sum of a, of a vector bundle of, of rank equal to the dimension. Um, over C, uh, uh, there's a tool from topology for this. It's the top turn class or the Euler number. So over C, this number of zeros of a section provided that section has um, simple zeros or you count with, with some multiplicity um, is uh, the um, top churn uh, class, which is a number because we're in the top dimension um, or equivalently the Euler um, number uh, of, of the vector bundle. Um, uh, in particular, it's independent of, of this section here um, because we've lost it uh, in the fact that topology gives us a, a top churn class. And then, um, if, if we know the homology of, oops, two, four, um, uh, we can compute the, the Euler class of, of this particular, your bundle is two. Um, uh, and what we'll do is generalize um, the Euler class to work over an arbitrary field. Um, uh, it's um, uh, useful to think about what happens over R 
So over R, we also have a, an Euler class where there are real points and um, uh, it becomes important to orient um, your vector bundle. So over R, there is an Euler number of a relatively oriented um, rank R vector bundle. Um, and uh, it, it counts the zeros of a section um, with a um, sign given by the orientation. So um, we have a degree map. If you have two spheres of the same dimension uh, and a map uh, between them, uh, the homotopy class has an invariant um, called the degree. Um, uh, and um, if you had an, a section, let's call it sigma. Um, so with an isolated zero, W isolated zero of sigma, um, we can choose local coordinates and a local trivialization in a way respecting the orientation and trivialization, local trivialization of uh, V and then some sort of restriction of sigma to an open set looks like R to the R to R to the R. Um, and if we take a small ball around our point W viewed in there, we can get a map from uh, a sphere to a sphere. So this leads to a degree of, um, uh, of a local degree of sigma uh, at W as the degree applied to a, a map on the restriction of a small ball. Um, and then the, the Euler number is the sum of these local degrees. And um, this is independent of um, the section um, because there's also a cohomological uh, interpretation of or construction of this uh, Euler um, number. If we want to compute it with multivariable calculus, then um, for uh, a simple zero, so for W simple zero, we write out what our equations meant in, in local coordinates. And um, then we can form a Jacobian as um, we have these sigma i. And if you've got coordinates x, j, we can take this determinant and evaluate it at w. And um, if it's a simple zero, this Jacobian is non-zero. And if it's positive, it preserves orientation and the local degree is a one. And if it's negative, it reverses orientation and the local degree um, is, is a minus one. And we add all these up and uh, we get the, the Euler class. Um, uh, a remark is that when you have a uh, sum and of odd degree, so we did it in this case, we had a bunch of sum ends of degree one. Then uh, changing one of the changing the section to be minus on one of its coordinates. So we have this real vector bundle. This is relatively oriented. And um, if we change um, our section, which was sigma one through sigma four to uh, some new section, which was minus sigma one to sigma four, then one row of our Jacobian changes sign. So what we'll get is that E V sigma prime is minus E V sigma um, because all the local, because all the Jacobians changed sign. Um, but since we know both of these equal EV, this implies that the real number here um, is, is zero or is two torsion um, uh, 
um, uh, but we have no true torsion because we're in, in top degree. Um, uh, so um, something similar is going to work over any field. So over K and this is a field of characteristic not two. Um, we have an A1 Euler number. Um, uh, this has, um, in fact, we have A1 Euler numbers with respect to many cohomology theories. And um, uh, this um, is part of A1 homotopy theory. And we'll give credit to Morel Vavatsky explicitly. Um, Morel has a degree map, which um, for a whole bunch of uh, theories um, uh, will give you this formula here. Um, has a degree map from of maps from the sphere to the sphere um, to uh, uh, a, a group that um, contains more information often, or it contains at least the same information as Z um, that, that we'll talk about. And the spheres um, uh, uh, in question are we can form a quotient of schemes. Um, and this looks like the top cell of, um, of P to the R, which would be a two R sphere over C or an R sphere over R um, and, and serves as a, as a sphere uh, in A1 homotopy theory. Um, and the target is this growth and fit group. And this is formal differences of quadratic forms. So this is a group of um, formal differences of um, isomorphism classes for the group completion or the growth and degroup of isomorphism classes of non-degenerate or unimodular is the same over a field symmetric bilinear forms. And over a field, all of these um, folks can be diagonalized. Um, so we can uh, present this group. It has one dimensional generators. Let's call a one dimensional form corresponding to the matrix A, this angle brackets A. Um, so this corresponds to the form on the one dimensional K vector space K, K cross K to K, which takes x, y to um, uh, a, x, y. And if we change basis, multiplying one by some non-zero b, uh, for, for non-degenerate, a needs to be in k star. Um, uh, we can change basis, multiplying by one over b or something, and um, have that. Um, we've, we've also got a multiplication for tensor product, and we can do that. Um, uh, and this diagonal form is the same as this one when a, b is not zero and a plus b is not zero. Um, this implies that this, there's a special hyperbolic form uh, one plus minus one, which is also equal to a times one plus minus one for any of these angle brackets A, like that. Um, so um, some examples are that over algebraically closed fields, all of these generators are the same. Um, and so we get um, just the number of generators. So we can take the rank of a form um, or the dimension of the underlying vector space um, uh, 
we've been working over across Monian, which is defined over Z with vector bundles defined over Z. Um, and um, uh, the after group completing the very interesting unimodular forms over Z um, are no more data than the um, unimodular forms at, than the and then the growth index that group over R. Um, and Sylvester's theorem that gives you um, this rank and the signature. So our generators become one and minus one. Um, uh, and a, a fun one is that uh, the uh, atoll dimension one fields, like finite fields, are um, uh, classified by their rank and their discriminant. Um, we're about in the middle. Um, so, uh, um, uh, why don't we? Um, take a break uh, here, and then we'll start adding up the, the local degrees to make a, well, actually, sorry, I was gonna, no, 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 I was gonna, uh, sorry, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me tell you the Euler number over, over K, and then, and then we'll, we'll break. Okay, so um, uh, uh, we're gonna need a transfer map or a trace map. Um, so if we have an atoll extension, for example, of fields, Um, we have a transfer map from forms over L-valued forms uh, to K-valued forms, and it uh, postcomposes with um, the uh, um, the trace from Galois theory, the sum of the Galois conjugates. So if we had um, a uh, form on some vector space V not having to do with our vector bundle, but it's just a vector space with L. Um, we can send the class of that to viewing V as a K vector space and applying our form and then taking the sum of the Galois conjugates or the trace from, from Galois theory and the stays non-degenerate um, from, the, from the separability um, assumption. So we'll, we'll, we'll need that in, in statements. Um, uh, uh, so, um, uh, we have this degree that's valued in GW of K, and we'll add up the local degrees um, to get an Euler class. So um, given V to X, um, a rank R relatively oriented. Um, vector bundle, say over K. On a smooth proper uh, dimension R K scheme, we'll get this Euler number um, which is the sum can be computed as the sum over the points W and X such that uh, a section with let's say the, the zeros are isolated. There's a cohomological definition of this as well. Um, of the degree of a local degree at um, W of, of our section and using the degree map valued in GW of K, we'll get an Euler number valued in GW of K. And the multivariable calculus way to compute this, so say, suppose, Sigma is a section with isolated zeros. And if the zeros are simple, we can compute that same Jacobian and just stick brackets around it. Um, so uh, where the degree for a simple zero is a transfer from K W down to K of this Jacobian 
uh, sigma of w before we forgot everything but the sign and just recorded uh, like taking the signature of this form and here what we'll do is remember the the value of the um, of the derivative itself and here um, the jacobian um, is the, the the matrix of partials so this is um, that sigma i x j where sigma one through sigma r is um, after taking some atoll coordinates and restricting to a small enough open set um, you can uh, make um, your section um, look like a map from part of ar to um, 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 uh, so, and this is, this is, uh, again, it's independent of the section. Um, and um, this is a viewpoint with um, cats on an uh, Euler class that's due to large morel and um, Bazell uh, and Morel and uh, uh, Levine. This is a, a viewpoint joint with Jesse Cass and Deglesian and Kahn give a lot of great functoriality um, uh, for, for this, this Euler class. Um, okay, so now I would like to have uh, to take a break. Uh, thank you. Okay, well, thank you very much.